but it's, it's not just one play, it's that play. <laughs> it's like Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody. It's only one song, but actually, no, it's not. That's right. It's, it's, it's a tent pole. <laughs> it's the song. That's right. That's awesome. Right? Oh, well, I have four years of eligibility. So. Yeah, well, I don't see know that? what those rules are. What, what would be your best, uh, wh which, would you play offense or defense? You know, I'm a three time intramural champion as quarterback, so. But then I play safe. Welcome to the 2018 BYU Football Media Day Between the Lines web chats. I'm Lauren McLean, and we are going to have a filled day of BYU football today, starting with these web chats from 8 to 9 Mountain Time, followed by State of the Program with Kalani Satake, Tom Homo, and Trevor Maddich. Following that, we'll have a two-hour BYU Sports Nation, and then more web chats. Then we have Cougars in the NFL with some of our recent draft picks and also some of the former BYU players that are now in the NFL, followed by even more web chats. So we're literally going to be here all day for you guys. But first, we're going to start off with head coach Kalani Satake and Trevor Maddich, ESPN analyst. How are you guys doing today? Great, great. Awesome. Are you guys morning people? Because this is early. I think, I think being part of the gospel and serving a mission, you have to be a morning person. Being a father and a husband, that, that's how it works out. I think that's I got off my mission thinking I would get up at 6 in the morning every day. Yeah. Nope, went right back to getting up late. That's what I did, too. That's what I'm saying. This 8 o'clock, like, I'm up by 8, but, but being productive at 8 o'clock is a whole different story. But how many kids are jumping on your chest playing tag on your bed in the morning? It's always when you, you can sleep in is when they wake you up. So that's right. That's or when yeah. you set an alarm and, you're, and you're, you wake up. 30 minutes before we can't go back to sleep. So that's that's my luck with, with sleep. But uh, I was, I'm excited for, for the media day and the means of football. The season's right around the corner for us and camp's right around the corner. So uh, it's time to go. I'm, I'm excited. Excited to go. Well, right before we went on the air, we were talking to Trevor, and he said he has a, a year or two of eligibility left. I don't know where you would use him, but... But you said you had four. So, and I have uh, four. Yeah, let's let's do it. I could have you guys yeah. used you guys a long time ago. So <laughs> we we just want to give you as many options as possible. Know that you have multiple options here. <laughs> we'll take it. All right, Kalani. So when you're not coaching, what are you doing? What have you been up to this summer? Um, football is my life, and then other than that, is my family. You know, so uh, I think it, it it's all intertwined in there, and. Um, we could talk about my daughter's dance recital and <laughs> and the quarterback battle all in the same same conversation. <laughs> um, and I have a wonderful family, a wonderful wife, and children that uh, love BYU and love being uh, part of this uh, the, the role that I'm at right now as a head coach. And uh, so we're excited. We're excited to be part of the family and really excited about the season. So um, just anticipation and having great alumni and that's around, especially Trevor Maddich and others that. Are here to support us. Our, our players feel it. I feel it as a head coach, and uh, we're going to use that strength to help us this year. You know, when the coach talks about family, uh, that is a winning principle on the field as well. I mean, and and I'm glad to see it, the way that he does it. As I travel around the country, I talk to, to programs big and small. I talk to national champions and people that are on the rise. And the ones that succeed the most, that do the most with what they've got, are always the ones that integrate their personal families with their program. So that the players know the coaches not just as coaches, hmm. but as husbands and fathers. That helps those players not just in their development as people. It helps them with more focus and more commitment to what they're doing as football players because all of a sudden you've got a much bigger picture that's there. I love, Coach, that you're talking about family like that. 
And we had your kids send, in, send us in a few videos for Father's Day. I don't know if you saw them. I did. Yeah, that was, that was awesome. You guys, I appreciate you guys editing the part where they... <laughs> My kids, have, unfortunately, have my sense of humor, and uh, they like to poke fun at me quite a bit. And uh, but it's, it's a, yeah, they're everything to me. So I'm really excited to, that, that it's, a, you know, that BYU is so accepting of families, and that this whole football experience, even as a fan, I mean, I always make the statement that before I was a football coach or a football player at BYU, I was always a fan. Hmm. And so it's, it's fun to um, be a fan with my, my kids and my, my wife and my family and my extended family being raised as a BYU Cougar, you know, and so uh, we enjoy all the BYU experience from Studio C, dance, um, <laughs> everything that's all about BYU. We're really excited to be part of it. And you've been able to spread that love a little bit. Back in April with your Mortal Life Foundation, you guys went to Harlem and, and helped the kids over there. What was that experience like for you? That was great. I mean, anytime that we can do um, do good in the, in the community, I, I think that the, uh, the background is because of Lavelle. And, and the, the family aspect of everything is because of Lavelle. And I think that's, he's been such a huge influence in my life. As, and now as a coach, it still carries on. So he did a service mission out in, with Patty in, in, in Harlem and um, expressed to me while he was still alive that, that that was something important to him, that community was uh, important to him and Patty. So we went back and did some work and took 30 players with us and had a, a great time. And, um, you know, I, I just, I, I was really proud of how our players handled themselves. and. They continue to stay in touch with the people in Harlem and with the, those kids, and I'm uh, really excited to see them make a difference. And you can tell that those little kids look up to the players and to you so much when you watch the videos. We showed one there earlier. So we, we dived a little bit into what's happening today. Trevor, we're having, we have some recent draft picks here, Jamal Williams, Brunson Kafusi, Fred Warner. What's it like, what impact does it have on BYU to have a guy like Jamal Williams who had a great first season in the NFL? It tells the players here that they're part of a bigger program that has excellence that they can as, uh, aspire to and that there's football beyond BYU football and that's something that's always been here and it continues to be. It also tells recruits that if they want to go to the NFL, BYU is a great platform to get there. When I talk to NFL scouts, I um, ask them about sort of the reputation of players at different programs around the country. And when I get to BYU, I let them know that I came to BYU, you know, so <laughs> this is my school, so that they don't think I'm trying to, to sneak up on them. But they always <laughs> say the same thing about BYU players that leave college and go to the NFL. They always say that they love coaching BYU football players because they say they are coachable. They are humble, but they have a healthy sense of who they are, which is different from arrogance. That, that's the kind of confidence that those coaches want because then they go on the football field and they know that they can win, but they don't tell the coach how to coach them. They are guys that stay out of trouble. They work hard. They're good teammates, and this comes from NFL scouts. So I think that the whole concept from recruit to Cougar to NFL is something that, that makes this stage a really good platform to get to the next level. Another one of those guys that you're talking about is Fred Warner Kalani, and we know that he signed a four-year deal recently with the 49ers. He was getting some first-team reps, so obviously the 49ers are seeing something in him that they like. What do you think that is? Well, I mean, other than the fact that he loves football, well, he, he like what Trevor said, he represented himself well, you know, uh, on the national stage, played against with the, with the type of teams that we played in the last couple of years. Um, the film is out there with him against Power Five uh, opponents, and whether we won or lost, I think he's he's he showed that he belonged uh, on on that on the next level in, in the NFL, and, and definitely as a draft pick. You know, I think he's gonna. I've said it before, he 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 has a lot more uh, things to do, and, and potential-wise, he's got so much growth. And then he graduated in three and a half years at, at a really difficult uh, academic institution like BYU, so he's seems to fit perfectly the mold and that's um, you know they don't have to worry about his behavior he knows he's already lived, lived the life of, of, a, of a disciplined athlete and a disciplined student and so it only makes sense that he'll do well in San Francisco and we have a good history with Niners you know that's why I was yeah. a Niner fan because all the BYU Cougars that played there so it's right. just it's fitting for him to be there yeah and you talk about growth and, and he has gotten bigger some of these guys, they, you know, they, they're already big when they play in college, and then you see when they come back after they've been training for the NFL, and they are just huge. Yeah, unfortunately, it, it doesn't just stop there, though. After they're done playing, um, <laughs> it, you know, you get used to eating so much. and. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Coach. I know. I know. I can see the monitor. Growing. I got you. Oh, I, I'm, I'm with you. So it's, it's the, uh, 
Yeah, I, I, we'll have to just warn him in, in, in 20 years to slow it down. Either that or just keep playing for 20 years. Yeah, that, that'll work yeah. too. There you go. I actually did want to ask you guys this. So, because you were an offensive lineman, you always talk about how much you love food. If we were to take you both down to Bam Bam's Barbecue right now, who do you think could put down the most meat, the most food? Yeah. I, really? Well, I, I, most people eat to their full. I eat till my mouth gets tired. So <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> That is so you, strong. you can't chew anymore. Can I borrow that? I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's really good. That's really good. That's a good line. Yeah, no, I, see, right now I look like I swallowed New Jersey. Like, <laughs> my, my goal right now is to get down to where I look like I swallowed Rhode Island, and then Poughkeepsie, <laughs> New York, you know, and then down to a small town like maybe Nephi, right? <laughs> and, then, and then just, uh, so I'm on the way back down. It's a good thing, but even though my mouth gets tired, that's... That's strong. I, I might use that line yeah. too, actually. Well, you have I a like couple that. of 330 pound defensive linemen, though, but they, they, they don't look like me. They can run, they can move. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, we have a big mole. He, oh. he lost over 80 pounds and he still looks really big. He's at 80 now. Yeah. Like, so I think he's last still, time you said it was 50, now he's down to 80. Oh, yeah, he's, he's wow. lost. I, I think he's it's doing, it's doing well for him, but he's still the biggest guy I've ever seen. So. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want him charging at me, that's for sure. That is for sure. Step aside, get off the X. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So Trevor, last year you were able to see BYU in action in Portland State. You were able to call that game oh for boy. ESPN. What was that like for you just to come back and be able to call a game at, your, at BYU? It was a thrill to be here. It was a thrill to be back at BYU on game day because what I do for ESPN requires me to be in the studio or to be at other stadiums all the time. So to come back last year and to see those banners waving in the breeze between the corners of the stadium, <laughs> look at the mountains off in the distance. It was just to hear the roar of the crowd. It was just it was a thrill. It just, you know, game day never leaves you when you've experienced it here because there's just something about that stadium, those mountains, those banners and those fans that I haven't experienced anywhere else. There's places with bigger stadiums, there's places with, you know, that are beautiful, but this is a special place, and I'll tell you what, to sit there and call that game was a thrill. That's awesome. There, there is a different feeling here, that's for sure. Kalani, this year, it's, it's hard to know during spring ball exactly what you have, that's what you have fall camp for, but from what you've seen so far, what do you see that the offense is gonna do this season? Well, I've seen a um, uh, 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 Offensive staff that demand a lot from their players, and, um, and and at times it's been really uncomfortable for our our players to really extend themselves and and and, and uh, have so much expected of them. But um, they're answering the call, you know, and, and uh, having having these guys step up and and um, we were physical. I, I think having uh, Jeff Grimes as an offensive coordinator, he's an old line guy, so um, there couldn't be any. Uh, it's all all physical, you know, so. For him, he could he could have used way more live sessions. Even though we did put the quarterback live five practices, and, mm -hmm. um, I think I think we were able to see how our guys perform. I think it's, it's so much in the past, and that, it's kind of where college football is gone. Even regular football, is, everyone's in the shotgun, and they play seven on seven most of the time. And so it was nice in spring to get the pads on and, and have guys get hit a little bit, and, yeah. and uh, really see how they react and when 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 it's actually live football. Yeah, we have a lot of quarterbacks at your at your disposal. I guess disposal yeah. maybe isn't the best word, but we got got me really excited uh, yeah. from what we saw in, in the practices in spring and, and uh, just the discipline that our guys had, especially on the line of scrimmage. And we had some real good battles up front, and I think that's that's kind of where BYU has to go. We have to we have to own the line of scrimmage in order yeah. for us to have a chance. You know, it's just interesting, coach. You say that the um, I, lo I love what you're doing here. I love what you're doing with that. Because I, every year I travel around the country and literally I'll drive 12,000 miles in my car, my time, my expense, and I visit programs, literally from I start in Nashville home. And I'll end up in LA to Seattle, from Miami up to Boston, and literally from ocean to ocean. And, and I'll talk to, to just head coaches, coordinators, et cetera. And I spoke with a head coach this year who was, a, as an assistant, was a national champion. Now he's a head coach at a Power Five school. And he said that, and he talked about the physical nature of, of his goals. And he said that there's never been a national championship when asked how, or national champion, when they were asked how they won the national championship, said, we out finessed them. Mm -hmm. They always said we won the line of scrimmage. We were more physical than they were. And so the fact that the, the basics that you're, that you're focusing on right here matches what I see all around the country in the most successful programs. Well, and that's, I think, that, I mean, you, I think you, you seem biased when you're an old lineman talking about how, how important the line game is, mm -hmm. but if you ask anybody that plays football on the offensive side, 
quarterback, running back, receivers, tight ends, they'll always go back to the five guys that get the least attention than anyone else. And so you have to be a different breed to play on the line of scrimmage. And I think we, when I was a kid growing up watching BYU and going to the games, we always had great O linemen. And that's, um, you know, I said before, Mormons make good O line, so O line, <laughs> so we should be able to keep working on that. And I think uh, Coach Grimes has done a great job with Coach Pugh and and, and establishing that culture. But I think it's important to to understand we know the game is a physical game. It's important for us to protect our players, you know. But um, the, the intensity level can always be ramped up, and it can always be at a certain at, at a certain level and standard. And so, um, although we want to keep the limiting the the hits that our guys take to the head, it's important that they understand the intensity of the game. And mm -hmm. and so when we say physical, it's a, more the aggression. And, right. And being able to do that with a lot of discipline, it's really hard to, to do, but our guys have done a great job in spring. For some reason, the old linemen seem to be the nicest guys, too. Well, that you meet. they're the <laughs> nicest Crazy. guy and, until 1 o'clock on a... You know, on a Saturday afternoon, and then all of a sudden, nice goes out the window. That, that's the cool part of it, though. I mean, because you look at Coach Sataki, I mean, he's, he's a player. Coach, you're, you're a fullback. I see he was a coach first, but I see that, that player in you. And the thing is, Coach has as big a heart as anybody I've ever been around in this sport. But you look into his eyes, and, and he looks like a guy that will flip that switch and run over you and like it I thought on you were about game to say day. I romantic. love it. You look into his eyes. <laughs> oh, no, you in a different way than where I thought you were going to go. No, 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 because you see the fire. You see the fire, and it's yeah. great. And that goes back to what you're saying. Offensive linemen are nice until they're not. <laughs> and true. that's cool. Well, I appreciate you guys being here with us. Up next, we're going to have Aaron Roderick and Fessy Sataki. Any, any dirt or anything you want to? No, Keep I love those guys. guys. I, mean, I, I mean, I played with A-Rod, and, and um, so we have that, that teammate brotherhood already, and then I, my coaching career, I've been with him the whole time. So I've, I've been his old line coach when he was offensive coordinator, and, um, and then Fessy had basically raised that kid. So they're, awesome. they're, they're two guys that I trust with my life. Well, we're excited to get him on here. Thanks again for being here with us, guys. Up next, we have Aaron Roderick, quarterback's coach, and Fessy Satake, wide receiver's coach. You're awesome. Okay. Thank you Thanks so much. Thanks so much, guys. There. I, I don't even that's, that. that's coming up here for these guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, blame Brett.
Welcome back to the 2018 BYU Football Media Day Between the Lines web chats. I'm Lauren McLean, and right now we are with Aaron Roderick, who is the quarterback's coach and also the passing game coordinator, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you hesitated. Okay. And Fessy Satagi was the wide receivers coach. Thanks for being here with us, guys. Is this your, so this is your very first BYU Football Media Day. What are you most excited for today? We'll start with Aaron. Um, I'm just excited for the first game. I, I, uh, I think about it pretty much all day, every day. <laughs> and today just seems like one more step closer to that, that moment. So I think it's all in our minds. We're all, all of us are just thinking about playing Arizona. Yep, the yeah. countdown begins. What about for you? Same thing, just we've been so excited as a staff. We talk about it every day and, and we just want the rest of, of all the you know, Cougar Nation and BYU fans to feel that excitement from us and the reasons we are so excited. And neither of you are strangers to BYU. You, you didn't go here, but I mean, you've been around the state. You played here before. What's it like coming back and being a coach for you? Um, it's been pretty, pretty smooth transition. I played here and then I was a graduate assistant here for three years. And I've been away for a long time, so a lot of things changed and stuff, but coming back's been great. I'm, I'm working with a lot of my former teammates and uh, people I've coached with before or, or played with. And, mm -hmm. So it's been an easy transition, just we have a really great staff. That's awesome. And, and you are Kalani's first cousin. Yeah. What's it like coaching with Kalani? Uh, it's, it's, it's been good so far. Um, <laughs> I, I just remember growing up, coming to all the camps and going to all the games and, and watching them and being such a big fan and following guys like, like Coach Roderick and Coach mm -hmm. Lamb and all the guys, Coach Guilford. Yeah. Um, and then there was a little pocket where I wasn't as invested, but I still have always been a fan of BYU. And so being able to be on this side of things and coaching is, is pretty exciting. Kalani doesn't hide a lot, but what's something about him that not a lot of people would know, would you say, since you've been around him basically your whole life? Man, he's, he's pretty <laughs> transparent. Like, yeah, I think what you see is what you get from him. I don't know if I have any dirt. And if I did, I'd be... It's too early to share, probably, so. Yeah, well, keep that in mind. Keep that in your one. back pocket. Oh, okay, go ahead. I think one thing that, you know, Kalani's known as a defensive coach, but he played offense and coached on offense as well. Before he, before he went to Utah, he was an offensive coach. Mm -hmm. And so I think uh, one thing about him that people don't realize is what a good offensive coach he is and how, how uh, invested he is in that and how uh, he, wants, he wants to have an explosive offense. And... He's not just out there trying to play defense and protect right. the ball. You know, it's like he's he's got a really great offensive mind. He's got his hand a little in the yeah. offense a little bit too. Yeah. So kind of similar to that, you were a wide receiver yeah. when you were here at BYU, and now you're the quarterbacks coach. How does your knowledge as a wide receiver kind of tie into what you're doing with the quarterbacks? Uh, it ties in a little bit, but really, um, you know, most coaches, I think, when you coach long enough, you can coach any position and. Um, when we're, we're all sitting in the room together for hours and hours and hours, you, you start picking up on what the other coaches in the room are saying about their position or what needs to happen here or this technique or that technique. And after, you know, 19 years, you just absorb a lot of stuff. Yeah. And so I'd, I'd like to think that I could coach a lot of different positions. I know Fessy could do the same and so could Coach Grimes and right on right. down the line. That's, that's the idea is you, you get enough guys in the room that, that all understand the 11 man picture then that's when you really have a chance to to be good and all collaborate together yeah. and, and you're the wide receivers coach spring ball can be sort of telling maybe not as much as you want it to be but what have you seen from this particular group of wide receivers um we have a lot of we have uh, a lot of different types of receivers um and i think that 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 presents a strong case um for for some potential success on the offense um, because you're just not cornered into one type of receiver. Mm -hmm. They're all hard workers. They're all great kids. Um, they all have uh, great playmaking ability, and we're reloading it, reloading it with some, some more talent in this fall. So after spring, I'm really pleased with the guys and how they responded to some of the challenges that we provided uh, to them as an offense. So you guys have a lot of quarterbacks, you know, that you're trying to weed through. You know, you saw a lot of them in spring ball. A lot of them got a reps, which is really nice to see. But it's probably really hard to narrow down which guy you're going to have. So we're going to help you. We're here to help you with that. Okay. So we're going to bring over <laughs> this for you. It's called, we're going to call it quarterback roulette, okay? So what's going to happen is you guys are going to spin this. 
has all your quarterbacks on here, and then we we threw in some that probably still have a little oh, eligibility. Spencer, quarterback. Yeah, Ooh. a little eligibility left. And so when it lands on them, you give us a case of why they could be potentially the starting quarterback. All right. <laughs> all right, Fessy, we'll start with you. All right. Closest. Don't land on Spencer. <laughs> I'm telling you, we said that. Okay. Oh, there you so go. Tanner Mangum. That's why, a good one to start that off. That is. Yeah. It's an easy one why he could be um, because he's been it before. And he's 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 always um, he's always kind of been on the, on the front stage even from high school. He's a really successful quarterback. He's had a great year here and and whoever it ends up being, Tanner could be one of those guys just because he's done it before. He's right. a great leader and um, physically his his body's changing and and I know coach Roddick's um, just done a great job with him so Awesome. Anything you want to add to that? Yeah, just how motivated he's been. I think he feels like he's got a lot to prove, and uh, he's lost 22 pounds since I got here. Wow. And uh, he looks great. He's in really great shape, and he's he's played well before for BYU, and so I just think it's our job to help him get back to that level again and maybe even play better than that. So. Um, we're hopeful that that's what's going to happen. We're working to get that Achilles healthy. Yeah. All right. Do you want to? Fess, we'll just have you spin for Coach okay. Roddick. He doesn't have to yeah, move. Right. This is exciting. I, I want to. Oh, almost got Tanner. Oh, Bryce Harper. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Bryce I Harper. love that the quarterback's coach got the round. The baseball okay. player? <laughs> yeah, the baseball player. Okay, well, I don't LBS know if you can guy play quarterback. Hates BYU, though. I don't know if you can play quarterback, but. Um, I do like baseball as a way to measure football players because okay. pitching and batting, there's nowhere to hide. Like that's a true mental toughness test. And so he's obviously a pretty mentally tough guy that's yeah. standing the plate and deliver in like high pressure situations. So to me, that's one attribute of baseball that definitely carries over to football. He's got the mental yeah, toughness to do absolutely. it. He's a, pre he's a pretty yeah, buff I mean, you're, guy you're, too. You're right on the big yeah. stage and it's just you and the pitcher like, that's yeah. not that's not a, a situation for cowards. That's so, right. Yeah. He'd be a great donor too. <laughs> he would be a really yeah, good donor. He would. So. All right, let's let's spin it two more times. Only two more of these guys get an opportunity. Who we got? Who'd that land on? Zach, Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson. Zach is a Zach could be the guy because um, he's a fierce competitor and. Uh, it's very rare for just a freshman to come in and, and have an impact on a team in what, whatever role, but especially at the quarterback position. Um, but I think Zach's done a great job at just kind of rallying the troops. He's always looking to throw with the guys every day. He's always looking to watch film. Um, and none of that's forced. It's genuine, and he just he wants the team to be um, as good as we can be. So I've been super impressed with Zach after uh, the first several months here. Awesome. Anything you want to add to that? Yeah, just very talented guy and mature beyond his years. He's an uh, extremely hard worker. Yeah, he's, he's got a shot to be a really good player. Cool. All right, let's get one more spin in before we end here. Oh, got to go again. Me Bryce, Bryce really wants to be quarterback at BYU. Yeah. We'll have to let him know. Oh, you get the two big athletes. <laughs> <laughs> Another donor. LeBron James. I will take LeBron James at quarterback right now. <laughs> no question. Right now, I promise you we can, build an we can build an offense around LeBron. Wow. For sure. I mean, he probably Let's wouldn't be go. throwing the ball. He wouldn't even have him throw the ball. He'd just run. Uh, just, just give him the ball. But and I guarantee you he can throw. Yeah, yeah, we'll, take, oh yeah. we'll take LeBron. Yep. Yeah. Okay, awesome. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you guys got a tough job ahead of you trying to decide who you're going to pick, but you got a lot of really good options, obviously. LeBron James, I'm sorry, is not one of those options, <laughs> but the other seven are really good yeah. options. So thanks for being here with us. And up next we have Preston Hadley and A.J. Stewart. Is there any, anything you guys want to say about them before they come on I uh, well I just I just got done coaching with uh, with Preston okay. and I know he's he's like the mayor of BYU wherever you walk around with him everyone knows who he is but both those guys I think are the most they, they just got great hearts they're genuine guys they love football um, they make coming to work fun so I got nothing but the love for those guys awesome the mayor of BYU mayor I'm gonna of remember BYU. that yeah. all right coming up next we have running backs coach AJ Stewart and Preston Hadley
You're watching the 2018 BYU Football Media Day Between the Lines web chats. I'm Lauren McLean, and right now we're here with AJ Stewart and Preston Hadley. What's up, guys? How you doing? Good. I'm doing well. So they just said Fessy, they being Fessy and Aaron Roderick, said you were the mayor of Provo. What, like, break that down for me. What does that even mean? You know, for Fessy, what Fessy failed to mention <laughs> was really I'm just his entourage ah, okay. coming through here, you know. Gotcha. The minute he stepped foot into, into Utah County even, you know, he's more like more along the lines of like a governor, you know. So like I said, I'm just the poor man's version of, of, what, <laughs> of what he's doing. So, you know, he's just real humble about it, but. Well, I mean, you, you've been around here. You played here and then you were a grad assistant. You left for a little bit. What's it like being back here in Provo? Oh, it's been fun being back. You know, there's been some, you know, there's a lot of familiar faces, some, some new faces, you know, and um, it's, it's fun to be a part of just this era of BYU football. So you, you before you came here, you were coaching at Rice, right, mm -hmm. which is in Houston. You're from St. Louis, uh -huh. is that right? Yes. So what was the biggest culture shock for you when you came to Provo, Utah, and here at BYU? Because they are definitely not similar. Honestly, is the... People give me a hard time. We've been doing camps, and everybody here thinks it's like super hot. But to me, this is like nothing <laughs> compared to the heat and the humidity that I'm used to uh, growing up in the Midwest, and then especially in Houston. So I think uh, just really being able to truly uh, not take for granted this lack of summertime, in my opinion, yeah. uh, that we're having here. The humidity in Houston, man, there's there's nothing to compare it to that. It's crazy. Sure. But so nothing like culture-wise, though, more just the weather. Uh -huh. Yeah, more, more of the weather. The culture's great here. Um, people love football here, so it's, it's been a really welcoming environment for me. And uh, Like Fessy said it earlier, I heard him on the previous seg uh, segment, uh, just the, the guys in our office are, are great to work with, and uh, they make coming to work fun, and guys like Preston, uh, we're, we're already like brothers in, in just a short amount of time. That's awesome. And I, I was told that they sometimes mistake the two of you, like when you're on recruiting trips, for players. Yeah, Is that do. true? How, how old are you? You're... It's turning the ripe old age of 30. 30? Yeah. Yes, 30, right. 30. I just turned 29 years old. 29. Okay, so what's it like for you guys coaching guys that really aren't that much younger than you? I think we have an advantage. Uh, we, we've talked about it before, just we kind of have a better understanding of them. We're not too far off. We're still kind of in tune with what, what they're hearing and what they're seeing, you know, on, yeah. on social media and the music and, and different things like that. So um, obviously we keep, we, we make sure we keep a distance as far as, you know, let them know that we're still their coach, but right. also help them understand that, you know, we're here for you. And we do understand, you know, some of the challenges that you may be facing. Right. Um, in culture right now. You're much more relatable sure. than some of them, maybe. What, what's it like for you? Well, I think it's it's easy, as a coach, it's easy to forget what it was like to be a player. Yeah. You know, and so not being as far removed as, as other coaches might be, um, you still, in a way, think the same, you know, and whether it's, you know, doing a drill or or, or watching film, you know, we're, we're still in the somewhat the same generation, the millennial yeah. generation where, where maybe our attention span might not be as, <laughs> as long as some of these, I'll just call them more seasoned coaches. And just I mean, you're hitting 30 though, term. you're, you're you know, getting on the great. other end, but 30 is the new 20. We'll still category, you know, that's, that's right, the new 20, that's what I you say, know what I'm saying? that's what I so, say too. Um, but oh, really like AJ said, you know, it's, it's a little easier to relate to the players, you know, we we have the same interests, kind of, you know, in a way, in certain aspects of life, going through similar things, yeah. you know. But at the same time, you try and keep a, a healthy, a healthy distance yeah. as well. You know, there is this this fine line to, to keep it professional. Yeah, for sure. And so that's the that's the the challenge right there at times is just keeping that balance. Not just being their buddy, you also got to be their coach. Yeah, we're not I'm not here to be their friend. Yeah, you yeah. Know? No. It's it's a bonus if you are, right. but that's why we're not here for that. Cool. Well, let's dive into the team a little bit. You're over the safeties this year. You have guys like Troy Warner, Diane Gonwaluku. What are you seeing from that safety spot so far? Um, just coming out of spring, I'm, I'm seeing some depth develop. You know, I, I think right now we have three really, really good safeties in, in Diane. I just call him Diane Lake because I just tell him. <laughs> well, I'm, we're going to stick with Lake. I I've wish known I you since you were a sophomore in high school and your name was Lake, so I'm going to keep calling you <laughs> Diane Lake. 
uh, and, and Troy, and then also Austin Lee, I think, is uh, the sleeper that I don't think a lot of people uh, quite acknowledge enough. Um, and he, he he had a bunch of injuries last year that he was that he was pushing through, but um, he came out of spring ball really, you know, didn't did a really good job for us. He's really smart, he's versatile. And then with Troy and Dian, just their experience playing corner, you know, I think we'll be able to to really improve our, our play at the safety position just because of those guys experience on the field just in general, but then mm -hmm. being able to, to cover like as as corners, you know, which we ask a lot of the safeties us with us really being a quarters based defense. Um, really, it's it's really just cover zero. Yeah. You know, if teams, if an offense wants to put you in cover zero, they can. Right. And so it helps to have guys like that, you know, Troy, Dine, and Austin, uh, who can really, you know, really lock down, lock down their side of the field. Um, I'm, I'm excited. You know, they're all smart. They all love the game. They're all all just good people. You know, they're fun to coach. And so, uh, just just coming back, I've been. I kind of hit the jackpot in being able to coach guys like that and just the rest of the group. I mean, we have a fun position group. That's awesome. That's that's nice to be excited about it. And, and AJ, you guys have you have a lot of depth yes. at the running back position, which has got to be exciting for you. For sure. What's the one thing you want ingrained in these guys as you're headed into fall camp? Um, we we already started in spring, and it, we talk about foundation every day. Is just building uh, on solid foundation, not creating bad habits early uh, as we started implementing this offense, imp implementing new uh, terminologies within our room. It's just starting with great foundation and building on top of that uh, foundation. And, and I always use the analogy, let's not build from the roof down. You know, we have to, yeah. you know, lay the cement, build things up brick by brick, I mean, do it the right way. So that, that's really the biggest thing. And, you know, the foundational principles protecting the football, um, just knowing your assignments, just day one, you know, basics are, are things that um, I think they can – People lose sight of them at times, but I think those are a difference between winning and losing and when, the, when the game's really uh, close and you're playing in those games where whoever shows up and makes the, those two or three plays a game is going to win it. So that's what, what we're trying to implement early, and, and I think that's what's going to allow us to be successful. Awesome. Well, both of those position groups are ones that I'm sincerely looking forward to because there's a lot of talent mm -hmm. in those two groups right there. All right, we're going to play a little game with you guys. You ready for this? We did a little digging through social media and whatnot, and we're going to play a game called Caption This. Okay. So we're going to start. I can't remember what we're going to start with. I think we're going to start with something with AJ. So if you guys look down here, there's going to be a video. And Preston, when it pulls up, you're going to have to caption it, okay? Uh -huh. oh, here you go. Man. Here you go. Oh, no one's safe. Kobe. <laughs> <laughs> So break this down. What, what's happening right here? Right here, uh, we're in Harlem. Uh, okay. Mortal Life Foundation. Uh -huh. and some middle schoolers called us out on the basketball court. <laughs> One of my goals was always to, you know, go to Harlem or just go to New York and play basketball against, you know, somebody. Yeah. It so happened to be middle schoolers, but they were there. They were the <laughs> opponent that day, and I just had to give it my best shot. Um, You're like, hey guys, there's more to life, and this is it. Yeah, this yeah. is it right here. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to kind of, like I said, with the running backs, break them down, and then we're gonna build them back up. So uh, a lot of people gave me a hard time for going hard on middle schoolers, but where I, when I, where I grew up, the older guys didn't take it easy on us. Oh, yeah. it's, it's what made no. us better. You can't go, hey, kids these days, I feel like they're all handed trophies, right? You gotta, sure. you gotta he's, tell them he's that that's still, how it He's is. still building them back up after <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, he's I've still been, building them back up. Like, <laughs> His parents are still, their parents are still We, we went out there to build confidence, you know, and uh, we're still, yeah. we're still building, <laughs> still right. building. All right, for this next thing, we have a picture of Preston that, I, AJ, I want you to break down. Uh, What's, well, if you had to caption this, what would you say? Yeah, no one's safe out here, man. <laughs> Throw, throwback Thursday, uh, the glow up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a little dumb and dumber feel right here. Yeah. What happened, Preston? What, what oh, did man, you do? Oh man, chipped my tooth. You know, just, I think that was uh, <laughs> that was actually during fall camp, my senior season. Actually, I remember that. Wow. And I just chipped my tooth in practice and. Social safe. media is a scary place. Dude, yeah. No, no one's safe. We dug that far back. No, no one's safe. I yeah. gotta go. I gotta go private, man. That's something I will probably. <laughs> I gotta go private. <laughs> oh yeah, but then someone's still friends with you. You can get the picture. Really, so, all right, yeah, we got, right. we got two more. We got another one of AJ here. You just have some really good videos. So, oh. Preston, if you had to caption this, what would you say? I would say, she said, do you love me? I only love my bed and my mom. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> was that the actual sampling? No, it was uh, actually Squally. Squally gave me a hard time for this. It's uh, on the new Kid Cudi album. I liked it a lot, um, and it had just come out. Yeah, didn't he say it was garbage or something? He like said it was garbage, and you know, I, I thought about you know pushing his playing time back a little bit for making that comment, but yeah, I'll, he's I'll gonna let him be, he's gonna that. tread lightly. <laughs> yeah. Stuff that he says. Is that something you do? You like to just jam out on your way? Um, he's vibing. Music is music is my passion outside of outside of sports. Cool. I love music, so hip hop in general is just something that uh, it gets me going every day, and it's just something that's always kind of been been that thing that release for me outside of you know everything else. Who's your favorite artist? J Cole. J Cole, nice. Who's your favorite artist? I like Future right now. Future? Future. All right. From PG, you got a, do you like a little country? You got like a little country music. I have a couple songs I like, but <laughs> it's still grown. It's still grown. You on can me admit it, Preston. It's fine. It's still growing on me a little bit. So I'm trying to diversify. You know, yeah, there you go. Not, we t we're always preaching to kids don't specialize just in one sport. <laughs> so we try and take it hard. You know, I'm trying not to specialize in just yeah. one genre. You know. Well, I mean, in coaches, coaches usually can coach multiple positions. That's right. You That's the be goal. Diverse. That's I like the it. goal. Okay, we have yeah. one more picture of Preston. <laughs> going, Back when you played, I don't know that guy. I'm going private after this, dang. <laughs> All right, caption that, AJ. It's hard putting a team on your back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Dang. I, I don't know how your teammate, your old teammates would feel about that, Preston. No, man, I was you, just, you came from one of the best defenses to come out of BYU. Man. Hey, I was just a role player, you know. I just that was like the JR of the 2012 defense, you know, the JR Smith. <laughs> that was me, you know. Uh, no, I I've, I've had four surgeries now from football, so I was just coming off of uh, two shoulder surgeries there. Yeah. So. And I don't know if everyone can see that he actually has a boot on right now, and he rolled up in a scooter. Yeah. That's gonna be your best friend for the day. What was what's this latest one about? Man. I was hoping you wouldn't have to address this. <laughs> this one actually is probably, there's, I wish I had a better story, but uh, I actually just tripped down some stairs and <laughs> broke my foot. That's <laughs> it. That's it. Yeah, well, that's I'll, I'll, say I'll, I'll say this, I'll say this though, I'll say this, all right? It happened back in December. Okay. And we didn't know it was broke until mm. May. So, you know, I was hooping with AJ and, yeah. You know, lifting with all the other defensive coaches, you know, so at least I can say my mom didn't raise no little wussy, you know, <laughs> run around and broke a foot, you know, so I'm just trying to make my mom proud. You, you, you were know. working fools on a broken foot. Well, who, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go wins? quite that far, but, uh, you know, AJ, he's, you know, he's, the proof is in the pudding. Yeah. You know, it's yeah, breaking when, ankles when in two, when so. you're school and middle age, or mid, yeah. middle aged, middle aged and pressing middle, middle aged and, and then school. middle yeah. school kids, yeah. Oh, we're middle yeah. aged now, is that, we consider middle aged now? Like he said, with his diversity, with his music, that's how yeah. I am on the basketball court. <laughs> if there's a little kid out there, I'm gonna play just like I'm playing against LeBron James. <laughs> there's no like gray area for me. Can't get soft on them. Yeah. We might we might have to do a video of you guys playing. We'll get That'd we'll see great. if we can get some people in play some basketball before the season starts. Just call us the Splash Brothers, you know, we're the Provost <laughs> version of of uh, right. Steph and Clay. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah. All right. Let's put your money where your mouth is. Awesome. <laughs> okay, thanks for being here with us, guys. Up next, we have John Denny from the Miami Dolphins and Gennaro Guilford. Mm. You guys looking forward to that? All right, don't go away.
Welcome back to the 2018 BYU Football Media Day Between the Lines web chats. I'm Lauren McLean, and we're here with John Denny from the My Long Snapper from the Miami Dolphins and Gennaro Guilford, the cornerbacks coach here at BYU. Guys, what's up? How are you? Good. Yeah. Well. When was the last time you were here in Provo? I was actually down here last month. Did the uh, father-son sports camp. Oh, nice. So Here we, with your uh, son? Yeah, I was down here with uh, three of my sons. Okay. And uh, they love it. Look forward to it. We did, this is our third year, and uh, they That's got it awesome. on the calendar. They, they love that day. They, they love coming to, to campus and roaming around and living That's in the dorms. That's fun. That's sweet. Sports, yeah. So they 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 stay in the dorms. Where do you stay? In the dorms with them. You stay in the dorms with yeah, them. Yeah, it's just like wow. it's just like the good old college back in the days. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going back, and they're accelerated up. They feel like they're big time, and I feel like I'm a young buck. It's again. making me younger. That's awesome. Yeah. How old are your kids? Well, this is 13. Okay. And then uh, about every two years, 11, nine, and then the last two little girls, seven and five. And you've been in the league for 13 years, right? I have. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. And you two were teammates from 01 to 03, yes. I believe. What was the, when was the last time you guys saw each other, Gennaro? Do you remember? Um, well, I did run into him last month, but before then. Okay. I'll say prior to that. It's been a probably while, been probably 2003. Since, yeah, since, we since 2003. Yeah. Besides last month. Yeah. But wow. since then, yeah, wow. since 2003, yeah. How, how has Gennaro changed from the last time you saw him? <laughs> Not much. The, hair, the hairstyle is a little different. That's, you know, that's about it. That's really it. Gennaro looked like a player when you when you started coaching here, and I saw you down just on the field with all the guys. I'm like, this is who's this guy? Who's this new player? <laughs> he looks player. so young. Yeah, no, he is. It's crazy. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. How's John changed from the last time you saw him? Do you have this curly mane? Still fit. It's probably still. a lot lighter. Than <laughs> I, was. I mean, still fit. You know, of course he's. Lost a little bit, but you can yeah, tell no, through his shirt that he, he's still fit. <laughs> oh my gosh. You, you can tell, you know, you can tell he's still fit though. But that's awesome. All right, John. Well, you've been in the league like we talked about for 13 years. You have a lot of accolades. Like you played the second most games played in Dolphin history behind Dan Marino, third in the NFL for consecutive games played at 208. How have you been able to have such a lengthy career in the NFL? Um, there's a lot of things involved that I can't control. I mean, you got a lot of the X factor, coaching changes, injuries. Yeah. You know, I just focus on the things I can take care of, which is, you know, staying in shape, taking care of my body, getting in the film room, doing my studying, studying the game, and just putting it all out there so that, you know, when my time is up, I'll know that there was, there was nothing else that I could control that I yeah. could have done. And you have, there's a lot of guys here that want to go to the NFL, some that are yeah. in the NFL like you. What advice would you have for those guys that are trying to get in? Um, basically, kind of just reiterate what I just said. Don't worry about any of the uh, other things you can't control. You know, you, you put it all out there. You, know, you do everything you can, and, and you won't have any regrets, and you, you'd be all right either way. Just put it all out there. Yeah. Gennaro, this is your third season here now. You're coming into your third season at BYU. Last year was obviously not the season you guys hoped for, but what do you want ingrained in your cornerbacks' minds as you're headed into fall camp? Wow. You know what, just just continue to work. You know what? They've been they've been working hard for the last couple months. Um, as far as as far as the summer goes. Um, they've been dedicated to to mastering their, their, their craft. They've been watching film and things like that. So um, we just need to, to, to master this game and um, make the plays when they're <laughs> presented. Yeah. And how are you feeling about your group as a whole right now headed into fall camp? Um, you know, I'm feeling pretty, pretty confident, you know. Um, we'll be about seven deep um, of, guys that can, of guys that can play. So um, it'll be a lot of competition come fall camp. I know the, the safeties are stealing a lot of your guys. How does that make you feel? You know what? Whatever makes the team better, you know. Um, they took two of my, both both starters, you know. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Um, I was gonna say right. that's what you say to us, but inside you're like, no, no, you know, guys. It, but you know what? It'll it'll make our team better, um, okay. and guys and, and guys have to step up, just like um, those guys did when they were when they were freshmen, you know. Um, yeah. Both of them started as freshmen, so they had to step up then, and um, it's, it's time for somebody else to step up. Yeah. Gennaro, there's one thing about John, I don't know if you knew, but he is the barber for the Miami Dolphins. Is that true? Gennaro is. I mean, no, you are. Oh, yeah. I said, I didn't know if Gennaro knew. <laughs> gotcha. Oh. John. I was going to say, that's a coincidence. You're like, what? Because I am. I haven't seen you there. No, I'm not, I'm not the barber. I do, I do cut a lot of the guys' hair. 
Uh -huh. uh, also, there's some staff members uh, just over the years. It's kind of like slowly accumulated into a, a small clientele. Wow. They have they have other barbers they bring in. You know, guys uh -huh. like to get their a fresh cut before a game, and so they got a, a couple barber chairs in the players' lounge, and uh, they'll bring in their guys. And, and uh, but I've also been known to use those chairs to give out free cuts to the Cut guys. Some hair. Yeah. Wow. How did you acquire that skill? Let's How did you acquire that information? I don't know. We're really <laughs> what is it? You can't, out, like, you that's can't not, ask like, an investigator. I don't have like a company. I there. don't like advertise. <laughs> like that's pretty like there's like 15 people that know that I do that. <laughs> no, um, small not 16. I'm oh, sorry. What was the question? <laughs> I just said how did you acquire oh, that? Oh. Uh, I probably started on my mission. Cool. Cutting hair, my own hair, and then you know companions' hairs, and, and yeah. Then, uh, I just always kept, always cut my own hair. I cut my kids' hair as they got older. Mm -hmm. you know, it's easy to practice on them. They don't, you know, little mistake they won't they won't notice. And then uh, <laughs> with some of the players, I was cutting my own hair, you know, in the lock in the in, uh, in, uh, showers, and uh, one of the guys had a real simple haircut, pretty he's balding, real short, yeah. and he was like, hey, can you just trim me up? And another guy saw, he's like, hey, can you do a fade? And I was like. <laughs> I can try. <laughs> and so, watch a YouTube so, so I told everybody, I'll, I'll give it all the free cuts you want. I get the experience. I Dang. can get better. And uh, money back guarantee. Look at that. Uh, <laughs> Look at that. Gennaro, would you trust him? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, it's not, oh, yours isn't okay, so difficult. My Gennaro's barber is actually Vince, our defensive GA. Really? Vince, cut, he's been cutting my hair literally for probably the last two years. Wow. Yep. Does he does he cut anybody else's? Yeah. So he's just he's good um, at it too. Yeah, I know. He's he, the BYU football barber. Um, and actually, Coach Hadley, who just left, he actually cuts hair as well. But he just got here, so I'm like, I don't know. I gotta, <laughs> I, gotta I gotta see your work. First. Yeah, you gotta give him tell him to bring you a portfolio. Yes, of but things he's cut. Yeah. in the meantime, Smart. Vince Vince has been cutting my hair literally for the last. Two, I haven't gone to any other barber in Utah besides Vince for the last two years. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, we only have a couple more minutes, and I wanted to play a game with you guys. You guys mentioned the last time you saw each other before last month was in 2003. Uh -huh. Oof, We're gonna man. get a, the top five songs that were popular. Oh. In 2003, and I, you bring me those whiteboards, and you guys are gonna guess what song it is. Okay, we're just gonna play like five seconds of it. And you gotta guess what song lose. it is. I'm not, I'm not a song guy. We can, we can start right now because we don't Let's have a lot of time. So whenever they're ready. Oh wait, gotcha. So we have to. Yeah. Oh, here you go. What's this? See if you get it right. I know this. Who's the artist? The artist? Artist or yeah, artist and song. We'll we'll accept both. I remember that one. All right, the reveal. Let's see what you got. Yep, you both got it. That was the number one song in 2003 in the club. Huh. Were you guys jamming to that when you were in college? I, I recognize I was. the song. I recognize it. <laughs> Maybe right. a little too much. <laughs> yeah. All right, second song. Let's hear it. Yes. <laughs> If that's how you spell it. The Queen. Queen B. All right. I don't. I Let's can't see what you got. Name. Jenny from the Block, right? I oh, know. Is that? <laughs> no, it's Beyonce. It's Beyonce. <laughs> Crazy in love, Beyonce. Oh, Crazy, Crazy in love, from yeah. the Block. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It was something like that. Well, it was 2003. If you're saying Jenny from the Block, no. that's it's been a minute. I, 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 I do minute. better. Yeah. All right. We're gonna do one more, one more before we end this. Listen hard. This is a little harder. Oh, you didn't give us that much music either. Well, Can we give one more little? Yeah, one, one more snippet. Let's see if they'll, they'll play more. <laughs> They're giving me the same, the same five seconds. <laughs> this one's hard. I'll, yeah, I could give you a little hint. Trying to blank. Not one, two, but three. Three Doors Down is the artist. Is that Arms Wide Open? Is that the song? Nope. The song is When I'm Gone. That was a hard one. Uh, but that was the number three song number in 2003. Three. Wow. I recognize the song. I yeah. Just... Well, you guys need to go back and you need to look at what's three popular in 2003 open. and come back next year. <laughs> That's the artist. We'll, we'll play this three game. Doors, three, door, three, three Doors Down. Three Doors Down. Is, down. <laughs> I was like, who's that? Okay. Okay, you awesome. Play, we played the song game in our coaches coaches uh -huh. office on the defensive side so I'm gonna get him with okay. that one yes you should that's a really good one because it's really obscure 
It was I'm so popular. It's a good one. All right, guys, thanks for being here with us. And awesome. good luck in whatever you have on Media Day the rest of the day. Appreciate Thank you. Thanks Appreciate it. Us. All right, we are done for the morning. We will be back at noon for more web chats.